Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to assemble an electric bike that comes from a direct-to-consumer e-bike company. I'm gonna be doing it with the Ride One Up 500 series, which is an e-bike that I'll be reviewing soon on Electrek. But this will apply to pretty much any electric bike that you order from a direct-to-consumer company, meaning basically you buy it on a website. And there are a lot of companies like that now, and one of the reasons that they ship like this is because they can save a lot of money by doing direct-to-consumer, but the shipping is pretty expensive for big bikes. So they'll ship them in partially assembled form, and sometimes they call this like 90% assembled, 95%, but it still means that you've got to do a decent amount of the assembly yourself. And while this isn't super complicated, if you've never done it before, it, it might feel a little bit odd or you might not know some of the steps. So I'm going to show you how to go through this with this bike, which will apply to most bikes that come in this sort of packaging. All right, let's get to it. All right, now for really heavy bikes, sometimes I'll flip the box up and sort of roll the bike out. For lighter bikes like these, you can probably get away with just lifting the bike out, but it's up to you on what's the best way to get it out. All right, from here, you'll wanna cut away anything that's holding the front wheel on and also cut away the handlebars. So you can start assembling these parts. And in this case, the fork is also uninstalled, so I'm gonna have to cut away the fork as well. After the fork is free and I've removed the foam, I'll unscrew the cap at the top and slide off the top cap, the dust cover, and the bearing race. Now I can slide the fork stem through the headset and out the top, where I'll then replace the bearing race, the dust cover, and any other various little ring pieces. From there, you can put the handlebars on the stem, followed by the spacers, or you can slide on the spacers first if you want to bring the handlebars up higher. Those spacers can be used for adjusting the height of the handlebars however you'd like it to fit your riding style and your body size. Either way, you'll align the handlebars with the fork, though you might need to adjust this once the wheel is in, because it'll definitely be easier to line it up with the front wheel then. And then you'll just screw on the top cap and tighten it enough to take out any slop in the headset. Now you don't want to tighten it so much that it becomes difficult to turn the handlebars, you just want to kind of take any play out of the headset. You still want to be able to turn the handlebars freely and not have any resistance there. Once you find the right tension in the bolt in that top cap, then you'll crank down those bolts on the side to tighten the handlebars into that location. Then you can remove the rest of the foam covering your pretty handlebars. From there you might need to flip the handlebars down if they were rotated to protect the levers or the display during shipping. Though you might save this step until you've got the rest of the bike built because it'll be easier to determine what a comfortable position for the handlebars is once the bike is assembled and you can actually sit on it. Next you'll want to clear out any foam or packaging that gets in the way of the front wheel so you can slide it onto the bike. You'll need to align the wheel between the disc brakes or the rim brakes depending which you have, though most e-bikes have disc brakes these days. And then you'll slide in your quick release skewer and tighten it down or tighten down the axle nuts if there's no quick release skewer. Mine has the quick release. Next, we can prepare the seat post by loosening the bolt that holds the guts together, then spinning the top plate 90 degrees so that we can place the seat on it, and then spin it back and tighten it down on the rails of the seat, checking the angle and adjusting it to fit your own bottom's needs and comfort requirements. Every bottom is a little bit different, of course, which is fortunate because otherwise this would be a very boring world indeed. Okay, moving on. Next, I will remove the plastic protecting the battery here, which I have to say that Ride One Up did a really great job here of protecting the battery and shipping. I normally see some cheap foam here, but they've got this fairly stiff yet flexible plastic that wraps around the battery, which is of course the most important and the most critical component if it were to be damaged in shipping. Next, I can install the left side crank arm now that the packaging is out of the way, and I'll make sure it's pointed the opposite direction to the crank on the other side. It's screwed in using an 8mm Allen key, which is fairly large, so hopefully you have one of these laying around. I had to go find my torque wrench kit, which had an 8mm hex in it. From there, we can move on to the pedals. Now, one of these will be reverse threaded, and one is correct threaded, so make sure you look at the base of the threaded part to find the L or R, which indicates whether it's a right or left pedal. The left pedal is the one that you'll screw on backwards, so it's actually lefty tidy righty loosey in this case for the left side. But that's annoying to remember, so I just remember that you screw in the pedal towards the front of the bike, and that applies to both sides of the bike. 
so the top of the pedal is always turning towards the front wheel when you install the pedals, no matter which pedal you're working on. Then I can get the rest of this pesky packaging off. And if it's windy around, please remember to collect this stuff right away so it doesn't blow away. And then finally, one of the last things you'll have to do is probably bolt on some accessories, such as a headlight in this case. This is usually just a simple matter of bolting it on, though with this bike you actually have to plug in the headlight wires, and you might even have to switch them around if you don't see the light the first time you plug them in to get the polarity correct. And the very final thing I do is go around and double check all of the bolts on the bike, especially things like brake levers, which are sometimes loosened during shipping, either purposefully to prevent damage or accidentally just from jostling around. Oh, and you'll likely have to pump up your tires too. All right, and that's basically all there is to it. I have a fully assembled e-bike now, and I'm ready to ride. You might just want to take the battery off while you're assembling and put it on the charger, so you make sure you've got a mostly charged battery by the time you're done, and so you can start having fun right away. And I probably should mention that if there's anything in this assembly process that you don't feel comfortable doing, you can always take the bike to a bike shop, and they'll be happy to assemble it for you. And if anything, it might be a good idea to take a bike that you've already assembled yourself to a bike shop and just have them do a once over, make sure you did it right, make sure the bike looks good and nothing was damaged in shipping that you didn't realize, just as sort of a safety check. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video and that it was helpful if you're gonna be assembling your own bike. If you wanna check out this Ride One Up 500 series, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find it on sale. And last but not least, let's announce the winner of the book giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Sly Golanov. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. Either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles. And let me know where to send it. And anybody else who's watching this video that wants a chance to win one of my books, all you have to do is put a comment below this video. You can say anything you want, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for anyone else who wants one of my books but doesn't want to wait to see if you're a winner, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.